we have some questions here, and uh, could you just go to the mic and uh, uh, identify yourself and uh, be as brief as possible. Good morning, Professor Huang Jing. Good morning, um, Mr. Nakao. My name is Macron. I am from the Philippines. I used to be a staff of the Asian Development Bank before I moved to LKY School to do my master's, and now I'm working in the school to do um, executive education and capacity building. Um, in my reflection, um, in the work that I have done for ADB, I think ADB has done so much in terms of promoting Asian economic regionalism. And uh, I have personally seen how um, the institution has advanced its agenda to promote um, regional cooperation for Central Asia through CARIC, to South Asia through the SAAC, and um, you know, East Asia and ASEAN. And you mentioned earlier that AIIB and the BRICS Bank have also tried or attempted to somehow replicate the work that international financial organizations do, such as ADB and World Bank. What do you think would be the greatest lesson that you can impart to these institutions who are also, in a way, trying to um, set up uh, mechanisms to support infrastructure development in the region? And what can they learn to promote Asian regionalism as what ADB and other existing organizations are doing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Another question? Uh, my name is Henry Chen from SMU. Uh, I have two questions. First is that uh, there are some reports that out of your annual lending of about 13 billion US dollars, the ADP operating budget is about 700 million US dollars. So it seems that the funding spread of ADB is going to be much higher than AIB. Because AIB is that they are not going to have a sitting board, they don't have overseas office. So if that is the case, consider the widespread of cost difference. So how are you going to structure structure the co-financings. And second question is, uh, consider that uh, the uh, ADB has uh, moved away in the last 10 years from the Heart Infrastructure Development Fund to soft development loans in education, environment, and advisory <laughs> works. So if that is the case, you're going into a co-financing. Is there going to be some complementarities, or there's going to be different areas? Thank you. Alec? Hi, good morning, Professor Nakao. Blake Berger with the Center for Asian Globalization. Um, I was wondering, you put out your eight, pri eight different priorities. I was wondering, do you have a priority structure for which one of those should come first? Does good governance lead to a more open investment regime? Or does a more open investment regime lead to more measures to have good governance? So I was wondering if you have kind of an incentive structure. And my second question is regarding the kind of state of globalization and that role in pushing Asian regionalism. Um, some people have said that Currently, the state of globalization is somewhat in regression because of more exclusionary trade policies, such as the TPP and RCEP, and I would just like to hear your view upon that. Thank you. OK, we have three people, five questions. Please, <laughs> Mr. Thank you very much. Uh, about uh, regionalism or uh, regional cooperation and integration, uh, that is, uh, the regional cooperation is in our charter or treaty to set up uh, the ADB in 1966. So, uh, <coughs> uh, ADB was, in a sense, uh, established uh, through the leadership of many countries, but it was not uh, by just by the initiative of Japan. Uh, 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 Japan wanted to have it because there were already African Development Bank and Inter-American Development Bank in addition to the World Bank. Uh, Inter-American Development Bank was uh, started in 1950s. So there was a very, it was a very natural idea to have uh, Asia's uh, development bank. But uh, there were many ideas, views expressed by Indian people, Sri Lankan people, Thai people, and actually the meeting of uh, preparing uh, the uh, ADB was held in Thailand, Bangkok, uh, using ESCAP for uh, the uh, UN uh, <coughs> Asian system. So. Uh, even compared to the AIB, the uh, uh, weight of uh, Japan in shareholding and uh, starting uh, the initiative itself was not uh, Japanese. And America was uh, not so keen on having this one uh, because uh, the United States uh, doesn't want to have uh, proliferations of uh, development banks uh, in addition to the World Bank. 
But uh, the United States uh, became more cooperative to this, uh, supportive of this uh, idea when they started intervening in Vietnam in the war. They wanted to balance uh, military intervention with the economic uh, support. So anyway, what I want to say is uh, <laughs> The idea of ADB was uh, from the beginning about regional cooperation. Uh, there was no true system to represent uh, Asian regionalism at that moment, except uh, ESCAP in Bangkok. And they don't lend and so on. They don't. Uh, they advocate things, but not much about uh, lending and so on. So people wanted to have it as a symbol of regionalism. And in the charter, it is clearly mentioned. And we are promoting idea. We have promoted the idea of, as you said, Central Asia, Karek, and the South Asia, and greater Mekong subregions to involve uh, uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, and uh, uh, more recently, Myanmar, after the transitions to market economies in the 1990s and onwards, the ADB had the initiative, started the initiative of involving uh, Mekong region countries to, to, to uh, have a stronger connectivity and uh, uh, better co uh, coordination. So one of the very clear achievements is uh, the power, for instance. Uh, Lao is now exporting a lot of uh, electricity to Thailand. It could happen because Thailand uh, feels safe to draw on the power supply from Lao, and Lao is happy because they can expect uh, a kind of a, a certain flow of money from Thailand. So without trust, they cannot do it. And uh, ADB is a such a trusted and uh, objective, uh, neutral, organization which can promote these ideas. We are doing this in Pacific Island countries. They can use uh, ITC and other technologies to I mean, work together. So uh, that's what we are doing. About the AIB and uh, Brick Bank, maybe they have a similar ideas and also the China uh, promotes the idea of a new Silk Road. So in some uh, project, we can work together. Uh, 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 that is uh, our idea. And uh, what kind of lessons, uh, uh, or uh, what kind of uh, ideas uh, we can impart or share with them? Uh, to, to me, one of the very difficult issues is uh, like uh, climate change, uh, or impact on the uh, environment, whether we can support uh, super critical coal station or not. We did in Pakistan, Jamshoro project. Uh, should we do that? Uh, th 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 there is a serious discussion in the board. And uh, other difficult issues are like <coughs> resettlement issues. In Cambodia, there is a dispute about the resettlement of the people because of railway project. So it's important to pay attention to these issues from the design uh, stage and also uh, while implementing them. And also it's important to engage uh, local community uh, like a civil society groups. So it's better to do that earlier than later. Uh, that is one of the uh, important lessons. Uh, about the uh, 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 hard or soft Hard or soft, uh, uh, most of our projects are uh, <coughs> lending uh, co to the uh, pr uh, infrastructure. Uh, you have uh, papers also, but transport, energy, mm -hmm. and uh, public sector management is, uh, this is, by the way, ordinary capital resource, so we have IDF also. Uh, public sector management is uh, basically policy-based lending. 
uh, budget support to uh, promote the ideas of uh, the reducing uh, tariff and uh, regulations and so on. But anyway, our focus is also on infrastructure. So the AIB's uh, focus is infrastructure, but uh, of course uh, there is a certain additionality or complementarity. But if uh, people say that the ADB is for soft, like education and health, and the AIB is for infrastructure, it's not uh, really uh, correct. <coughs> Another question is, uh, <coughs> Eight conditions. Uh, eight conditions are all important, and I cannot prioritize uh, anything. Uh, and of course, uh, there is always uh, discussion: what kind of things uh, ADB should uh, concentrate in? If uh, we do too many things uh, with a staff of uh, 3,000, it's uh, diluted. But uh, all these things are important. Infrastructure is important. <laughs> Education is important. Uh, health sector, we support the malaria. I mean, uh, anti-malaria uh, uh, case in uh, Pacific Island countries and anti-HIV aid uh, uh, program in uh, Mekong uh, area. Uh, we are supporting uh, technical and vocational education training in uh, Bangladesh, India, and uh, Alawa, and so on. And we promote the idea of agenda progress through these works. So when I visited uh, Benchan, uh, there is a program of uh, uh, Tibet, uh, the technical and vocational training. There are many girls, students who studied me mechanics. Uh, and we are trying to combine combine private sector expertise uh, for those educations. Uh, Macroeconomic stability, we are not the uh, IMF, and this is not our main goal, but uh, when we uh, support the Kazakhstan. Uh, we just approved uh, the big loan to Kazakhstan, $1 billion, for counter cyclical budget measures. So we uh, have a certain discussions about macroeconomic policies. So we, we are doing them. And uh, uh, for uh, this uh, uh, open uh, trade and investment regimes, uh, through once again policy based lending for to promote uh, the regulation, so we are doing it. Governance is important, and we have a very strong uh, um, institutions of uh, anti corruption and uh, integrity department and the auditor generals. Well, governance is very important because we, our lending money uh, lent from us should not be misused, abused. And uh, it is a good. Uh, uh, opportunity to strengthen the governance of countries. Social inclusiveness is important, and we support the conditioned cash transfer and unconditioned cash transfer, and the education and so on is a part of it. And vision for the future, we support the uh, five-year plan of China, we support the other programs, strategies in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and so on. So, of course, all these things are important, and uh, we are involved uh, more or less in these things. But the main main element is infrastructure building. <coughs> and another question is the TPP. Uh, well, uh, trade regime should be the open trade and the investment regimes are so important, but for some countries, transitions is not so easy, like a farming sector mining sectors and uh, free flow of the laborers, workers. It's not so easy. So we should be realistic. And RCEP and the TPP, RCEP is uh, ASEAN plus nine, uh, ASEAN plus uh, six countries. So, and that TPP doesn't uh, include, uh, uh, for instance, China and Korea. We shouldn't uh, look at this as a kind of a divisive uh, different ideas. In a way, of course, those are different initiatives. But uh, the, the ultimate goal is to m keep or to enhance openness and, uh, of uh, investment and trade regime. The WTO's uh, agreement is difficult, but by, uh, by making efforts collectively through these uh, uh, initiatives, we can uh, 
be closer to the uh, more open trade and investment regime. So I don't think uh, these are more, I mean, divisive uh, things. <coughs> well, we have uh, so much uh, co-finance with the uh, French uh, 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 lending institution, uh, Japanese lending institution, and so on. The spread can be uh, different, but uh, there are several ways of co-finance, uh, like uh, parallel finance. We uh, finance the same thing, but the uh, term and uh, interest rate can be different. So there are many ways to co-finance. Uh, it doesn't cause trouble to us. Uh, Hiro uh, from Central Asian Globalization Required School. Um, I hear from different experts that the previous president, uh, Hamehiko Kuroda, has undertaken a series of international internal reforms within the ADB. And uh, it dramatically improved the operation of the bank. And now I'd like to ask you how you have been trying to reshape ADB internally and since you became president in 2013. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? Yes. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, President Nakao. I'm Ayan Mukherjee from the Faculty of Law, National University of Singapore. I have one question regarding, this is your third year as the president. Have you taken any steps to include Russia as a donor member in the ADB? It was a question in 2007-8, they were trying to be a member, but it didn't take place. Your views on that, please. Thank you. Okay, we can take one more question. Uh, hi, I'm an economist at UBS for ASEAN. Uh, my name is Alice Fullwood. One thing that we've picked up on in this region is that Japan and China are both seeming to commit uh, kind of more capital to developing ASEAN and uh, emerging Asia in particular. Do you think this is a positive kind of theme for markets? Do you think there'll be significantly more capital flowing to these emerging markets given the, the, the emergence of AIIB? Okay, thank you. So about the reform of ADB, these are uh, things uh, I, I have been uh, uh, trying to do. And the one is uh, enhancing lending capacity and combining uh, OCL and ADF. OCL is like RB, IBRD of the World Bank, and ADF is like IDA of uh, the World Bank. Uh, no other MDVs have tried to do this, but uh, uh, we decided to do this uh, to use uh, leverage for the concession lending window. And because it's not a separate uh, an entity, legal entity, it's uh, just a trust fund of ADB. It was easy to, for us to do it. But anyway, I would say it's uh, really uh, epoch making. And uh, streamlining up uh, procurement procedures, often ADB is regarded as slow. And uh, so we should uh, do it quickly without uh, jeopardizing, damaging the integrity issues. And we give uh, more authorities to resident missions in 26 uh, countries. And the uh, PPP uh, is now uh, promoted uh, even more by establishing a new office. And we set up uh, seven sector groups and eight thematic groups to cover, to, to have, we have uh, five region departments and one private sector Operation department. Five is East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia, Central, West Asia, and Pacific. We have a regional departments. But as the World Bank is trying, we should have a kind of a sharing and producing knowledge, expertise across the departments, regional departments. So we set up these things with a certain secretariat for each group and uh, they work across the departments, the regional departments. Talent management is important, and it's easy to say that, but uh, we need a more flexibility, uh, mobility of the people to assign to needed uh, work. And also promote uh, middle career people to prepare for the leadership. And private sector operation should be strengthened out of uh, 30 million or 10 billion of uh, ordinary capital resources. 2 billion is now going to private sector lending without guarantee of uh, government. We should uh, further expand our operations. So, and also, uh, 
I established a new department uh, and uh, changed the name actually from uh, regional cooperation and uh, department to and sustainable, sustainable development department to climate change and sustainable development uh, department to focus more on climate change. And uh, there are several uh, things I did, but it's in detail. I, 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 I have uh, tried to make our system more efficient and effective. Uh, although procurement doesn't look so attractive or sexy, it's so important to do things right and quick. Another question is about uh, uh, Russia. <coughs> and, uh, uh, Russia uh, wants to be a part of uh, ADB members, and uh, any country can be uh, ADB member, uh, even from uh, outside the region. And Russia wants, uh, Russia wants to be a member as a non-borrowing, uh, non-regional country. But uh, we need a consensus by the shareholders, and. Uh, ADB's membership is, uh, regional membership is comp confined to the members of the SCAP of the UN system. Uh, but non regional members, uh, anyone can be. But it, we need a consensus. It's better to have a bigger number of shareholders, but if there are more members, the to reach consensus, to reach agreement becomes more difficult. So, once again, it's not my decision. It's uh, I mean, ideas of shareholders, and at this moment, there is no consensus that Russia should be a member. Uh, about uh, China and Japan, uh, there are many common interests, and, and also they are, in a sense, uh, compete, competing for influence uh, in the regions uh, by uh, by by uh, uh, trying to uh, increase uh, the capital contribution to uh, many institutions. And it's nice that uh, there are more financing capacity. But regarding infrastructure, I, I'd like to say that it's not just uh, supply-side financing. We need a preparedness in the countries. Uh, we need to find a good project. We need to find uh, prepare good projects. And also, if it is lending, we should also pay attention to the debt sustainability, borrowing capacity of countries. And many countries, including Vietnam and so on, have already borrowed a lot. Sri Lanka has borrowed a lot. So we also need to pay attention to those things. And if it is a private sector operation, PPP, we must think about bankability whether the uh, uh, proceeds of the investment can be uh, assured or not. For private sector to, to invest and they, when we support them, we need a good picture about the future flow of uh, income to the investment of PPP. So bankability, how to share the cost, how to expect uh, the income, how to share the risk, how to design dispute settlement system, those are challenges. I, I, I'm sorry that I, I diverted from your original question, but uh, it's nice that uh, countries try to increase their capital contributions. Okay, and uh, right on time, and uh, I have one announcement to make. Please stay with us because we're going to have a panel to discuss more details about the issues discussed with the five distinguished panelists, including Mr. Narco, I will immediately follow this one. Now please join me to thank Mr. Narco for excellent presentation.